In the retrospective analysis that we present, uh, we included 346 patients with advanced stage grade 1 to 3A follicular lymphoma previously untreated, all of whom had a PET scan obtained before initiation of treatment on which SUV maximum was calculated. About 15% of these patients had an SUV maximum above 18. Uh, the reason why we selected 18 as threshold as compared to previously used thresholds such as 10 or 13 is that those thresholds are typically associated with risk of transformation, whereas there's no information about the specific threshold which is associated with decreasing progression-free survival. And based on our analysis, the strongest association between SUV maximum and uh, progression-free survival was actually noted for a threshold of 18, with a hazard ratio of almost 1.5. Uh, we then decided to see what factors were associated with high SUV maximum before initiation of treatment. And on multivariate analysis, the only factor that associated was largest lymph node size of six centimeters or more. This is very significant because on one side, people may just assume that these patients have, because of, of a very large lymph node, just an undiagnosed uh, transformation. And so this suggests uh, maybe in patients who have a very high SUV and very large lymph nodes, an excisional biopsy as opposed to an incisional core biopsy may be preferred. We then looked into how these patients responded to treatment uh, and how they survived based on baseline uh, pre-treatment PET scan. Um, about 50% of patients were treated with our CHOP, most likely reflecting a clinician concern, again, for uh, undiagnosed transformation. And so we reported results uh, based on type of treatment. And what we saw was that patients who had a very high SUV, as I mentioned, with, um, above the threshold of 18, had a meaningfully lower complete, complete remission rate as compared to patients who had a lower SUV maximum. But this difference was statistically significant only for patients who were treated with regimens other than RCHOP, such as BR, R square, single agent rituximab, or RFND, suggesting that these patients with very high SUV may have just a more aggressive biology, and then they may deserve to be treated with anthracycline-based regimens such as RCHOP as compared to lighter uh, chemotherapy regimens or biological treatments. We also observed that patients who had a uh, SUV maximum above 18 had a lower progression-free survival, and once again, this was relevant only in patients who did not receive our CHOP, so those who did not receive an anthracycline-based regimen. And finally, uh, there was uh, patients who had a higher SUV also had a shorter overall survival. But of interest, this was independent of the type of treatment that these patients received. And this is probably because these patients also had a higher chance of transformation into large B-cell lymphoma during the observation time that in many cases was the main reasons for, uh, the main cause of death. So our conclusion is that, um, of course, we need to prospectively validate the prognostic value of pre-treatment PET scan and particularly pre-treatment SUV maximum. But based on our results, we already have a strong rationale to consider in future randomized trials to use pre-treatment PET scan as a certification factor.